Welcome achievers to MySciences.com. This is Mr. Aguirre with another online lab. Today's lab comes from the Holt Earth Science Edition and it's entitled The Angle of the Sun's Rays. The California Standard is Investigation and Experimentation 1G. Students will recognize the usefulness and limitations of models. The objective question we're going to try and answer is why is it hot during the summer? Well, in the Roman Empire as early as 1 BC, Pliny, in his book Natural History, used the word solstice. Now, solstice is from the Latin. It means sun stands still. We have the summer solstice, which takes place in June 21 or 22, and winter, which is December 21 or 22. Now, some cultures use these dates as the beginning of their seasons, while others use them in the middle. Now, the solstice is when the sun, as it crosses the path in the sky, appears to be either at, at extreme, extreme high or extreme low. While the equinox, meaning, again, Latin, equal night, is when the Earth experiences both the northern and southern hemisphere equal amounts of daylight, equal amount of uh, nighttime. The fall equinox occurs on September 22nd or 23rd, while the spring equinox occurs on March 20 or 21. To demonstrate, the Earth is tilted at a 23.5 degree angle, and that is why we have seasons. The Sun, at this point in the uh, spring equinox, is pointing, and both the northern and southern hemisphere are experiencing the same amount of daylight. Three months later, during the summer solstice, again notice that the Earth is tilted at 23.5 degree angle, the equator is not in the center, it's much lower and angled. So, the northern hemisphere is getting more direct sunlight. This is why it is hotter. The United States and Russia, China are experiencing uh, summertime, while the southern hemisphere is experiencing angled sunlight, making it its winter. Three months later, we have the fall solstice, uh, sorry, the fall equinox. And again, this side of the, uh, as the Earth rotates, is experiencing 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime. Again, three months later, during the winter solstice, now the e equator, which was down here, is now much higher. That means that the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun because we're still at a 23.5 degree angle. However, the southern hemisphere is now experiencing almost direct sunlight, making it their summer. And the angled sunlight in the northern hemisphere makes it our winter. To demonstrate this, we have a lab. You're going to use a flashlight, tape, paper, pencil, and two meter sticks. You're going to want to take your paper and tape it down. Take one of the meter sticks, and you may want to put a line to know where you put the ruler. You're going to want to put this all the way at the top, turn the light on, and you're going to want to draw where the light and the shadow meet. It's approximately a circle. The second part to this experiment, you take a second meter stick, you lower this one to about a 30 degree angle, that means that it should meet at about 50 centimeters. You turn the light on again, and what you see now is that you have an elliptical looking uh, light where the shadow and the light meet. So the, an the questions, in the quick lab bar, compare the two circles. Which circle concentrates the light in a smaller area? Well, that's the one that is at 90 degrees. Which circle would most likely model the sun's rays striking Earth during the summer season? So again, we have the summer because we are experiencing direct sunlight. Other planets, like Mars, is also tilted. This is a 25 degree angle, and it does experience seasons just like Earth. However, something like Venus and Jupiter only have a three degree angle, so they, their seasons are much smaller. Something like Venus, sorry, Uranus, which is tilted at a 90 degree angle, experiences extreme summer and winters. So the reason we have summer and seasons is because the planets are tilted. This is Mr. Aguirre, signing off.